Hey everyone, God bless you. Thanks a lot for tuning in. I've prepared a reflection for you today that I've entitled Jesus versus transhumanism. Jesus versus transhumanism. Mm. Just uh, this last month, I think on the 12th of September, the White House here in the United States issued an executive order, a fascinating executive order, a deeply concerning executive order. It was issued under the title On Advancing Biotechnology and Biomanufacturing Innovation for a Sustainable, Safe, and Secure American Bioeconomy. What does that mean? I think 99% of Americans has absolutely no idea. 99% have no idea what, what that means at all. But before I quote you something from the actual executive order. Let me just make an initial comment with regards to the development of technology in this age of secularism that the word safe seems to me exceedingly out of place. That on advancing biotechnology and biomanufacturing innovation for a sustainable, safe, and secure American bioeconomy. Here we are today governed in the West by oligarchs who have no formal commitment to God or any moral code, clear moral code. Here we are on the edge of nuclear war, certainly the closest in my lifetime that we've been to nuclear war. And the word safe is here being inserted into an executive order that I'm about to show you is anything but safe, anything but safe. Lead, let me read you a quote from the order. We need to develop genetic engineering, technologies and techniques to be able to write circuitry for cells and predictably program biology in the same way in which we write software and program computers. Lord have mercy. You have got to be kidding me. Treat humans like computers and make us predictable so that we can be literally programmed. The age of designer humans, the age of transhumanism is upon us, dear ones, whether we want it or not, whether we know it or not. It's here. Most of the great tech titans of our time, most of the secular oligarchs that are driving commerce today are formally atheists and reject traditional religion on principle. I remember being in 2017 in uh, Budapest, Hungary at the World Congress of Families that year. And on the big screen in front of several thousand people, a presentation was being made by the Hungarian family minister, minister for family life. Well, first, just a little side comment. Can you imagine America having a minister for family life? Oh, no, we have an ambassador for the promotion of immorality of LGBT, the LGBT agenda, literally a roaming ambassador. But to have a minister for the nourishment of family life, what a shock. And she put on the board a picture on the, on the large screen of all the prime ministers in Europe with a big line down the middle between Western European prime ministers and Central and Eastern European prime ministers. And then she posed a question. She said, how many on average children do you think prime ministers in the East have? And how many do you think in the West? The answer at that time in the West the average number of children in the family of the ruling prime ministers of all the Western European countries was, was it 1.6, 2.1, 1 maybe? No, that would be zero. Not a single prime minister of the Western European countries at that time had a single child. <laughs> These are the people making decisions uh, of great consequence 
for families without families. The average for the East was 3.5, 3.5. That slide told me a lot more than anything else about the divide in worldview and the consequences of that division in worldview going on. We are governed by very revolutionary and radical oligarchs who deny God, deny the Christian vision, deny the Christian view of eschatology, and are now finding themselves capable of using power in the most destructive of ways. They deny God, but, and this is the genesis for so much of the angst, so much of what drives transhumanism. On principle, they deny God, they deny eternity, they deny heaven, but they can't live with the consequences of that. It's just too bleak. It undercuts human meaning. It undercuts any solution for our problems. Uh, it eternalizes death. And so transhumanists are stuck between the world that they've made, this, the secular world that they've produced, and the consequences of abolishing religion. But they can't go back to religion. They can't uh, repent, although we hope that they will, and that some of them will start doing this. So transhumanism arise, arises. They can't escape, the, the secularists can't escape the yearning for meaning. They can't escape the, the echo of paradise inside of them. They can't eradicate, no matter what they do, even by denying God, they can't eradicate the fact that they are made in his image and that that image is in them bearing witness against their worldview. Our culture is poignantly described by St. Paul in the first chapter of his epistle to the Romans. Let me read a text from there, and I think you'll see how relevant his description is of our state. He says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men, who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which is known about God is evident within them, for God made it evident to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes, his eternal power, and his divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood through what has been made so that they are without excuse. For even though they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks. But they became futile in their speculations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of God for an image in the form of corruptible men. That last phrase, professing to be wise, they became fool fools. No line of scripture better describes the transhumanists. They've created a form of techno-utopianism that has no scientific basis at all. They really have created a very, very foolish system, though they are the wise of this world. They're driven to it by the negative consequences of their own making, of their own anti-religious impetus. This form of transutopianism, this transhumanism, seeks to solve the problem of sin and misery by simply denying that sin exists, and it seeks to solve the problem of death, of certain death, by the embrace of technology and the unfounded assertion that somehow, as technology develops, we're going to obtain a technology that will help us eradicate death. This uh, worship of technology, of earthly technology, is the evidence that they have abandoned the worship of the one true God, but they can't cease from worshiping. They have to find a savior. It just can't be a, a personal savior that might ask something of them. In fact, uh, one of the fundamental propositions of transhumanists is that death is optional. That's actually one of the uh, fundamental assertions that unifies the movement. Death is optional. And they call that science. 
Can someone please use the scientific method to verify that premise? Has anyone ever escaped death except one? I think not. How is that scientific? But only if we have more technology, they say. We can put the human brain into a frozen state now and we can gather some additional technology that will allow us to place that back into some sort of body and the person can have a form of immortality. That is how ridiculous it has become. This idea has arisen that the whole you, what makes you, you, your, your glorious personality, your consciousness, it's all supposedly stuck in the brain. This is the thought of these transhumanists, the place of the brain. In response to that, the church raises her voice and bears witness to Jesus's vision of what it means to be a human being. Jesus's vision of transfiguration over against the secular vision of transhumanism. The gospel this last Sunday, a magnificent gospel from St. Luke's <clears throat> gospel, chapter 6, Jesus says, love your enemies, do good to men, lend and be generous with any, without any thought of return. Jesus' whole focus, his whole teaching is, is targeting the human heart, not the human brain. He doesn't bypass the human brain. The brain is respected, certainly. The rational faculty is, re, is accepted and cherished and nourished. But the core of man, his heart, the center of his soul. Uh, this is the focus of Jesus' teaching. The development of a pure heart. The enlightenment of the mind. The healing of the human will. This is the intention of our Lord Jesus Christ's work of grace in our lives. It's not just to preserve our mental capacity forever. Jesus offers us, dear ones, transfiguration instead of secular transhumanism. He is the solution to all of our dilemmas. Technology is not the solution. Technology was not the cause of the fall of man and the onset of death, and technology will not be the solution to the fall of man and the onset of death. No, the fall of man was a personal decision, an affront, a personal offense between Adam and Eve and the Lord God. And the only solution is a personal one. Christ himself is the solution to every human problem and every human dilemma. He is the new Adam. He is the second man, the glory of the human race. He's the conqueror of Hades, the vanquisher of death, the destroyer of Satan, the savior of mankind, the atonement for our sins, the giver of eternal life. The future that he offers for everyone who repents and believes in him is so beautiful, it's so magnificent, it's so far beyond anything that technology of fallen man and the transhumanist movement can offer that it can't be reasonably put into human language. Those who have seen in the next life and what the Lord has prepared for those who love him can't speak about it much uh, in this life. No, God is the solution for our problems, dear ones. I think of the words of the prophet Amos, he says, thus says the Lord, seek me and live. Seek me and live. If, if you want to live, the way to live is to seek God, who is life. This is the truth. Through holy baptism, we've been united to Jesus. We've been adopted into the family of God. We've been brought onto a path of salvation that is the purification of the heart, the cleansing and the enlightenment of the mind the healing of the will, the cultivation of virtue. We have very little interest in editing genes, merging the human brain with a computer, or the potential of artificial intelligence, as though any of those things, should we accomplish them, will make a great contribution to the eternal destiny of mankind. Nothing can save us from the devil, from our sins, and from death itself except Christ. A lack of technology is not what brought sin and death into the world, and no amount of technology can banish it. Only one can do that. 
Only one conquers death. Only one saves mankind. Only one is worthy of our love and supreme devotion. The one true God and his only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and the most pure Holy Spirit. One God to whom we send up glory forever. Amen. Patristic Nectar Publications is pleased to present a five-part lecture series by Father Josiah Trenum, entitled, Sirach, Fashioning a Life of Wisdom. The Wisdom of Sirach, or Ecclesiasticus, as the book is known in the Western or Latin tradition, is a choice composition from the wisdom literature of the Old Testament, written in the second century BC in Hebrew and translated into Greek by the author's grandson in Alexandria, Egypt. This majestic portion of Holy Scripture combines the rich aphorisms of traditional Hebrew sapiential literature with the concerns and background of second century Hellenic culture. Jesus, the son of Syrac, was highly prized by the church fathers from the earliest days of the church. In these five lectures, Father Josiah hones in on the themes of learning and seeking wisdom, humility, work, wealth, almsgiving, friendship, social life, wives, women, medicine and physicians, youth and aging, and wise speech and the power of words. In these topical lectures, practical substance is given to the practice of the fear of God in a wide array of human activity so that the servant of God may please the Lord and live thoroughly and thoughtfully before Him. For these and other available lectures, please visit our website at patristicnectar.org.